please stand for the reading from God's word, Mark 1. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. A lot of wood out there this morning. Thank you for braving the elements. It is really, uh, really pretty nasty outside. The Gospel of Mark's an amazing book. First chapter, it, it literally starts out as a whirlwind of activity. That first chapter is so packed full of stuff, it would take, it would take months to unpack that. Jesus is baptized in the first chapter, and, and immediately he is submerged knee-deep in ministry. The text we have before us is about a third of the way, more or less, through that chapter, and, and Jesus is getting tired. He, do you ever get just tired? You feel like you just go, 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 and you just pass out for a little while, and Get up and right back at it again the next day. I've been tired like that lately. It seemed like for, for a while and it just can't get rested up. And, and I, I began looking the other day. I was looking at a, a daily journal and I, I, I chose just a random day. And, and I, I just wanted to share with you, just, it was just draining. It's sometimes it's so draining and heavy when you deal with life and death issues all day long. On October the 2nd, 2017, this was my day. Began with a devotion at 6.30, left the house at 8, took it to Greenbrier Motors for service, and 8.15 at the office, completed a Bible study, sermon prep, assisted a flood victim, instructed the janitor, spoke with the preschool director, supervised office staff over various issues, a message, sent a message to the SPRC, final touches on charge conference, 35-minute conference with the associate pastor, a hamburger at Hardy's, Started funeral arrangements for a church member. Visited the home of the family that had a deceased. Ministered to a person that was fired from their job. They were very distraught. Ministered and prayed with a single mom and assisted her with supplies. Counseled with a person in the middle of a divorce. Two homes for signatures of conference papers. Spoke with a person that had fallen and was bruised. Ministered to a supervisor at a nursing home. Ministered to a family, just told them that they just told they had, one of them had terminal cancer. Prayed with a young man that had lost a very young uncle. Ministered to a family in crisis. Visited and prayed with three church members in the briar. Visited with mentally challenged person and a caregiver. Visited with a mom and her kids from a domestic violence case. Got home at 8.30 that evening. Passed out and back at it again the next morning. After reading that, I get pretty tired. That's a, that's a pretty typical day in my world, and I suspect many of you, your days are just as, just as busy and you get tired. And You know what I'm talking about. Life just, it just keeps coming at you. It just, it just keeps coming. I remember one time at the, at the mines, I love to tell these mining stories, y'all can't relate to them at all, and, uh, which is good. Uh, but I, I was, everything in the world had been broke down that morning. The only thing that was running that day was the ventilation fan. Thank God. That was the only thing. All the equipment was broke down, and I never will forget Buell, Buell Lester. And I was running. I was sweating, and I, it was just a bad morning, and you know those days. And Buell Lester, who was a seasoned miner, had been around a long time, and he had a big old chaw of tobacco in his mouth all the time. And I sat down with Buell just to catch my breath, and I said, uh, I said, Buell, or he looked at me and he said, Rick, I, saw, I, I watched it go six months like this one time. Yeah, Buell, you're thinking, okay, you're, you're trying to encourage me, right? I'm thinking. He said, you know what happened, Rick, after six months of going, I got worse. And, and I was ready to kick him. I'm honest, honest, I, I come over here hitting him. You, you know how it is. You just, you just get tired. You, get, you just realize finally that there's no way you can make it apart from the power of God working in your life. So we come together around our common experience of just, we need God's help. We need God's strength. We need, we just get tired. Being tired is something which we can all relate 
So many demands on our time, constant, our energy is being drained of, of ourselves that we, we regularly feel overwhelmed and, and worn out. You have a job and a home and kids and marriage and other people, hobbies and, uh, and, and, and iPhones that just don't turn off. And uh, we're ready to scream. As I said in the earlier service, Calgon, take me away. And you've got to be pretty old to even know what that means. In my mining days, I'd be so tired and want a day or two off. I'd just be so wore out. And we'd have a couple of days, like a long weekend. We would drive 10 hours to Myrtle Beach, spend one day on the beach, and drive 10 hours home. My daughter used to tell me about Dad. She had four small kids and, and they, when they were younger. and She used to try to hide in the bathroom. And uh, from four kids, and she said, "Dad, I couldn't even go to the I couldn't even go to the bathroom." Said one of my kids would be sitting on my lap in the bathroom, but even when she was sitting there, she needed some rest. Often it seems that we just we just need some rest. Sometimes we just need to take a break. Jesus was like that. The demands on his life were so tremendous. Mark tells us that one time Jesus was so tired that he, he tried to go away to a, a region of Tyre and Sidon. And Jesus went into a house to hide to get away from everybody. He didn't want anybody to know he was there, but they found out, and here they come. Mark further tells us that Jesus was so busy, he couldn't even eat in peace. He says in Mark 6, he said, Jesus was a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. The one who bore the sicknesses and griefs and sorrows of the world, the world's sin. And the last line of that verse said, and he was tired. You think? You think he bore all of that? Today's gospel lesson records for us one of those days when there was just too much, too much uh, demand on Jesus' time. His day began with being, uh, being kept on going up all night long. When, when, when everybody else would leave, Jesus was just started. It was his Sabbath. Jesus went to the Sabbath, to the synagogue, to worship his quiet time in that place. As soon as he walked in, a demon comes up, and he promptly cast out the demon. The people marveled at his power. Nobody else around us is like this. They marveled at who Jesus was. And Jesus said his friends then went to Peter's house for lunch, and he walked in, and Peter's mother-in-law was sick. He promptly healed her. Well, then it spread all over the town that, that, that Jesus had healed this lady, and everybody knew about it, and Jesus healed her. He touched her, and the fever was away, and so everybody started coming in to travel. They began bringing all the sick and the diseased and the possessed into Jesus. What was supposed to have been a quiet afternoon of rest ended up when it was dark with a number of people now healed. They had normal, healthy lives, and everybody else left, but not Jesus. It was not time for him to sleep. He was so wound up. If you've ever worked, if you've ever worked long hours, I, I get so tired sometimes. I walk in, and I'm too wound up to rest. Have you ever been too sleepy to go to sleep? Everybody relate to that? You're so tired, you, you, you're wound up. Well, Jesus was so wound up and exhausted, he looked for a lonely place to pray. And Jesus was always tired because the people came to him with so much. The leprous and the blind, the dying, the crippled, all they had, they, they brought for healing. Remember the story of the man they let down through the roof? Jesus had a, there was a house full of people gathered and Jesus was teaching and, and the friends brought and tore the roof off of the house to get Jesus to just touch the hem of his garment. Those who touched him were made well. Those who touched him were made whole. Great crowds followed after him all the time. He healed them. He fed them. He taught them. He gave them so much of himself that his own family worried about him. There was one place in the scripture in Matthew 12 that Jesus' mother and his family tries to get him to just forces him to go take some rest. The reason that other people mobbed Jesus that Nobody else ever did the things that he did. They knew he was special. When it got so much for Jesus, he'd go away. Six separate times in the Gospels, you find Jesus getting away just to go up into the mountains, just to go and pray, just to, just to be by himself with God. He went away and prayed, even on the night before his death. In the closing moments before his arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane, where was Jesus? He was praying. What a a beautiful vision of Jesus this is. He's truly God, the power to heal all those he brought before him. And he's a true man because he got tired. He was overworked. 
He is God, able to sympathize with my experiences, but yet, like Jesus, he, he needed to get away. It feels good to leave all the pressure. It feels good to leave the pressure behind, but the key to Jesus getting away to, is, is, is not just to get away, but to get away to go pray, to be in the, to be in the presence of God. That's something I've had a hard, hard time learning over the years. You say, well, I'm so busy, I don't have time to pray. If you don't have time to pray, you're too busy. That's been a hard lesson for this old boy to learn. The lesson we can learn here is that when life is overwhelming, stop and pray. Stop and pray. For Jesus' rest came not just from doing nothing, but taking time to be with God. Our rest comes in the same way. When you take time to spend time with God, when Jesus frequently spent all night in prayer, John Wesley, who was renowned for preaching many, many times each day, he, would, he was spent, it was well known that he would spend up to four hours a day in prayer. And somebody asked him one day, he said, well, how do you have time to pray? He said, I don't have time not to pray. Jesus' rest, his recreation comes from God. David learned this fact and he prayed, return, O me, O my soul, to your rest. You see, we need to pray more. We need to pray more. The more tired we are, the more, the more we need to pray. We need to be more intentional about our prayers. Even before choosing his disciples, Jesus spent time in prayer. Before, he asked them, who do, before they asked him, who do you say that I am, he prayed all night. So we've been invited to pray without ceasing. Jesus says, come unto, all, unto me, all you that are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Just as he went to his father for rest so too must we. Church, when we pour our heart out to God, when we let God know what's going on in our heart and lives, not that he needs informed, he already knows, but it changes who we are. Great crowds follow Jesus all the time. He healed and fed them, but yet when he needed that time, when he needed the time to, to be by himself, when he needed that time to be in respite with God, he takes those burdens from us. He takes them away, and we're lighter, and we're liberated, we're set free. They don't weigh us down anymore. We need to spill our guts every now and then. We need to let God know and share our life with Him. When we try to live it alone without Him, all we get is tired. Jesus prayed. He prayed on the cross. While He was hanging between heaven and earth, dying to pay for our sins, He opened up communication between Himself and God. Father, into Thy hands. I commend my spirit. His last words was a prayer. He gave it all. Jesus gave it all. And that's what sustained him. That's what will get you through your trials. God raised him from the dead and he lives today. He lives in us and calls us to the same communion. He calls us to the same prayer. And such rest can be found only in the name of Jesus. I found such great power when I'm out in this community you can use the name of Jesus. There is so much power. Are you tired today? Be honest with yourself. You need rest. But the only rest can come when you give yourself to God, when you give yourself in prayer. Are you ready to re rest in Jesus today? Are you ready to rest coming to realize that you cannot handle your own life apart from Christ? Only rest in Him can give you peace. Amen. Amen.